Hello everyone, this is Pastor Tom Mullins. I am the pastor here at Lexa and Marvel United Methodist Churches in Phillips County. This is our daily devotional. It's Friday. It's the 17th of uh, November. Uh, we're approaching Thanksgiving week and uh, also uh, Sunday as well. Uh, the 23rd will be uh, Thanksgiving, the official holiday. We're looking forward to having some visitors with us, um, especially looking forward to um, my son and daughter showing up with their their uh, significant others and uh, their children, and uh, especially our newest addition, our first uh, grandbaby. Uh, looking forward to seeing Isabella again and everything. Uh, a little under the weather today. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if it's just the weather change, and um, I haven't seen wrong kelter um, a little bit here lately. So. I apologize for that. Uh, looking forward to Sunday morning. We're uh, expecting. Uh, don't know if uh, we'll have our district superintendent if she'll be here uh, during our service, uh, but uh, we're going to have a. It's scheduled for one thirty, uh, but we're hoping to move that up a little bit. Uh, we know attendance is not really usually all that uh, big uh, for a, a charge conference, but it's one of those things that we've done the work and. Uh, I appreciate all of the uh, input and all the different things. Uh, the 26th, right after worship service, we'll have a um, uh, Sunday morning worship service here at Marvel. We'll have our uh, the uh, SPRC meeting and have that and, and uh, fill out that paperwork that we need to do uh, that's due for December 5th for consultations. Uh, and then I'll complete the pastor consult uh, consultation as well. Um, uh, it's been a, an eventful few months, uh, looking forward to some, uh, changes and some things going on, uh, as we try to reach out, uh, we're still kind of recovering as it is from COVID-19 and, and the, uh, uh, the restart, uh, that we have and, and then to deal with disaffiliation and all those types of things. Uh, it's kind of put a shadow over, uh, mission and ministry and that, uh, uh, never knowing that when you're on shaky ground, not knowing if uh, your church is going to still be a part of uh, the denomination that you've uh, that you're a part of, or that uh, there may be something in, in your decision that wanting to move on to something and do something different in a different denomination as well. Uh, all those things are uh, kind of you know shaky for sure. Uh, being in a new appointment, it's one of those things you have to deal with the different things that are uh, that former pastors or former congregations, older congregations, uh, they have gotten used to and different things of that nature as well. I uh, uh, pray for us to be able to uh, jail and to make that uh, possible for us to be uplifting and to reach out to our community. Uh, I... Uh, was at the food pantry today. Uh, we had a, a ton of volunteers coming from Marvel Academy, I think it is. Uh, all of them were from there, uh, some teachers and different things. Uh, talked to the lady, uh, Miss Jess, Jessie from uh, the SNAP program, and uh, she was offering uh, a, a treat there. It was uh, turkey and celery and uh, uh, I think, is it curry? and uh, something else, uh, Greek. It was a kind of a salad, and uh, I got the recipe and stuff. I'm going to take that home uh, so that uh, Miss Kim can look at it. Uh, she's always great about uh, those kind of uh, treats and, and everything, and I thought it tasted pretty well, the little sample that I had, and I appreciate her being there. Uh, kind of adds to the uh, outreach of the food pantry and the way that things go uh, with that and how that is done. Uh, we are using the iPad. I'm so grateful to have that, to have the opportunity to be able to use that for our live feeds. And uh, I'm working with uh, Glenn and, and Deborah that we will uh, eventually have that uh, the uh, be posting Marvel's service. Uh, I think he does some Zoom and some different things that on the camera that he has. Uh, I will try this afternoon uh, when I'm working on finishing up my homework. Uh, that I have due for this week, uh, that I will uh, get that uh, on and and look at that and, and see if we can't 
um, uh, submit that to you each week. Uh, I think it might be able to hear a little better and different things that are going on. I believe um, through the pulpit and through the uh, the other podium uh, there in the church that uh, the sound quality might be a little bit better and different things. Um, I uh, I just ask for your prayers. I'm just having I don't know uh, I don't know how you would describe it. Uh, that's going on and it's like one of those things that I uh, 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 just just nothing nothing physical per se it's just one of those things that I don't know if it's weather change time change and all that kind of stuff rolling together and uh, you know just uh, ask for your prayers and uh, know that I'm praying for you I know that there is a lot of illness and injury and things going on and uh it's remarkable and uh, pretty exciting as far as we're getting ready um, to have some community things going on and some different stuff. Looking forward to that um, and, and the new year. Uh, new things, new exciting things that, uh, we're, you know, our Breakthrough Youth are doing a lot. They're starting to get active again. Um, you know, the church at Lexa, uh, we're hoping and praying for some folks to, um, to attend there, uh, to kind of open our doors and get some folks involved with that uh, congregation uh, and build that into a congregation. Uh, it's uh, never had dealt, much. I've dealt with some small churches, five and six and and, and uh, Sunday and different things like that, but to have only uh, a single person is uh, kind of unique uh, for sure. And I don't know of anybody else, but uh, I want them to have the complete experience and uh, hopefully as we move to do more online uh, at Lexa, we will be able to uh, be able to invite and to get some things uh, rolling in that direction. Marvel, uh, pretty exceptional church. I'm, I'm, ex I'm impressed with, with all the doings and things they're doing. I uh, want to pray for them and pray for their continued growth. We would love to have our, our, our uh, double up in, at worship services and different things like that takes more than just a pastor. It takes a whole congregation to be able to do some of those things and different stuff. So looking forward to that. Um, we are in our hymnal. We are in a section of dealing with uh, Christmas season and doing all of that. But we will move into Advent. Um, we are, what, the first Sunday of Advent is the first Sunday in December. And um, we'll have Christmas Eve communion excuse me, communion and, and uh, candlelight service there and uh, have that. I always find that to be uh, just a very uh, honoring the birth of Christ, remembering that the gift that God has given us in the life and, and the teachings of Jesus Christ and looking forward to that into the new year. Uh, you know, it's like that stuff will be upon us before we know it. Uh, I've always liked at the beginning of January, like usually the second Sunday in January, uh, to do a reaffirmation of baptism, and uh, I think that's a, a beautiful service and different things, and uh, pretty unique in the way that um, that uh, that uh, demonstrates the love and the kindness that we have for Christ. So um, let's begin, and thank you for being here this day in, uh, in November. Um, I hope it's prettier weather where you're at. It's kind of cloudy and overcast, and in the uh, uh, I guess we're in the low 60s and uh, everything. So uh, I was trying to think if there was anything else going on. Continue to pray and to remember uh, the, the Turners, especially uh, Bill and uh, Joe, as Bill is recovering from his uh, stroke and uh, the things that are going on with him. We hope for complete uh, rehabilitation and, and being able to do that. I want to pray for uh, all of our folks who are uh, in a hospital or in the hospice or in a home, uh, that they would be lifted up and know that we are there with them and knowing that we uh, care and thinking about them in our prayers and thoughts as well. Um, we feel better ahead with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day as we come into your presence, knowing that online we are reaching out to those who are uh, just can't make the the travel like they used to or want to and we know that we are uh, a part of them and they are a part of us as a congregation is a congregation of God's church 
We ask for your blessing upon our time together, the reading of your word. And as we read from the hymnal, help us to understand and to remember the gift of Jesus Christ, the fact that without him, nothing would be possible. We thank you for this day to being able to have the necessary supplies to attend to those who have come as guests to the food pantry, that they would be lifted up and they would have that nourishment for their bodies. And we thank you for the blessing of us being able to do that for them and to be able to do that in the way that they are respected and earned and, and know that it's more than just a simple hand out. It's a hand up. Because we want them to thrive, not only just to merely survive, but to thrive. And we thank you for our community, all the things that go on here, that everything that was dealing with uh, Halloween and, and, and Beggar's Night and our carnival here. We just thank you for the blessings of having those folks be with us as we were able to celebrate that time of remembering and honoring those who have gone on to the church triumphant. We ask for your blessing today and ask as we go forth to serve and to love and to care and help us to do that in a way that shows that we are being Christ-like in our activities and in our, our conversations. And thank you, God, for all that you do. In your name we pray. Amen. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on earth, good will to men from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies, they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains, they bend on hovering wing, and every o'er its babel sounds the blessed angels sing. And ye beneath life's crushing load, those forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now, for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. O oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet seen of old, when with the ever-circling years shall come the time foretold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling, and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing. Amen. I'm uh, pretty excited to be with you today. And I know it may not seem like it, but I am. I am uh, grateful to you as we continue this journey. Uh, we got a couple more weeks. And I was going to see, 1 Samuel ends with, uh, I think, 23 chapters. So we will, uh, the 30th, and then that Friday, uh, we'll begin the first chapter of um, of the uh, the Gospel of Luke, and I think it's just a it's a great reminder, and as I think it's great that we're in this part of the the hymnal now uh, that corresponds with that leading up to Christmas Day and Christmas, and then uh, well, actually the whole time of Advent talking about the first coming, the first Advent as we get ready for the second uh, and are prepared and waiting on the return of Christ to gather God's church. So there's a lot to do with that. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, son of Abilson, a son of Abel, son of Zeror, son of Bekaroth, son of Aphathai, a Benjamite, a man of wealth. He had a son whose name was Saul. A handsome young man, there was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. He stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, had strayed. So now the donkeys of Kish, which were Saul, which were Saul's fathers, had strayed. So Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the boys with you and go and look for the donkeys. He passed through the hill country of Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalashah, but they did not find them. And they passed through the land of Shalem, but they did not; they were not there. 
Then he passed through the land of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When they came to the land of Zoph, Saul said to the boy who was with him, Let us turn back, or my father will stop worrying about the donkeys and worry about us. But he said to him, There is a man of God in this town. He is a man held in honor. Whatever he says always comes true. Let us go there. Perhaps he will tell us about the journey on which we have set out. Then Saul replied to the boy, But if we go, what can we bring the man? For the bread in our sacks is gone, and there is no present to bring to the man of God. What have we? The boy answered Saul again, Here, I have with me a quarter shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God to tell us our way. And then in parentheses, Formerly in Israel, anyone who went to inquire of God would say, Come, let us go to see, let us go to the seer. For the one who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. Saul said to the boy, Good, come, let us go. So they went to the town where the man of God was. As they went up the hill to the town, they met some girls coming out of the, to draw water and said to them, Is the seer here? They answered, Yes, there is just, there he is just ahead of you. Hurry, he has come just now to the town because the people have a sacrifice today in the shrine. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the shrine to eat. For the people will not eat until he comes, since he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those eat who are invited. Now go up, for you will meet him immediately. So they went up to the town. As they were entering the town, they saw Samuel coming out toward them on his way to the shrine. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be the ruler over the, my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I, have been, for I have seen the suffering of my people, because their outcry has come to me. When Saul saw that Saul, when Samuel saw, when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He is who shall rule over my people. Then Saul approached Samuel inside the gate and said, Tell me, please, where is the house of the seer? Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the shrine, for today you shall eat with me. And in the morning I will let you go and tell you all that is on your mind. As for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, give no further thought to them, for they have been found. And on whom is all Israel's desire fixed, if not on you and all your ancestral house? Saul answered, I am only a Benjamite, Benjaminite from the least of the tribes of Israel, and my family is humblest of the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Why then have you spoken to me in this way? Then Samuel took Saul and his servant boy and brought him into the hall and gave them a place at the head of those who had been invited, of whom there were about thirty. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion I gave you, the one I asked you to put aside. The cook took up the thigh and that went with it, took up the thigh and what went with it, and said them before Saul. Samuel said, See, what was kept is set before you eat, for it is set before you as an appointed time, so that you might eat with the guest. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. When they came down from the shrine into the town, a bed was spread for Saul on the roof, and he lay down to sleep. Then at the break of dawn, Samuel called to Saul upon the roof, Get up, so that I may send you on your way. Saul got up, and both he and Samuel went out into the street. As they were going down to the outskirts of the town, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the boy to go on before us, and when he was, has passed on, stop here yourself for a while, that I may make known to you the word of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, in our last chapter, we talked about how the people wanted an, a king, and uh, that they were uh, clamoring for that, that they wanted to be like the other towns. And Samuel got upset at first, but then he was told by God that it wasn't about him. 
it was about God himself that they were re resulted in what they were doing and why they were uh, not wanting to be uh, or wanting to be like the others uh, in the lands uh, that were surrounding them and stuff because uh, they had rejected God's love and God's uh, grace that he had bestowed upon them for the fact that they wanted uh, they wanted to be rulers of themselves. And this goes back even to the time of Genesis uh, when the people in, uh, you know, in different settings uh, chose uh, their own way instead of God's way. And I think that um, we have to realize that in the modern church, we are the same way. There are those people that um, tend to want to be in charge. They want to be the ones to, to tell you... Um, tell you how to live out your faith and how to do all those kind of things. Uh, it's not that they're not supposed to encourage you and affirm you or even to criticize when it comes down to the fact that, you know, something that they don't agree with or something that they have a voice and they should have a voice uh, in, in running uh, things and, and running ministry and mission and different stuff like that. But there's cer certain... Uh, things that God expects of us. He expects of us to work together. He expects us to stay united. And he expects us to be, you know, to meet the challenges of life. And I think that's what uh, Samuel is trying to convey at first to tell them, let's let's wait and see what God says about this and how God wants to go about this. Uh, and then when they keep demanding wanting that to be um, a part of that, it turns out that there's all the, of um, the idea of how to do that in a way that strengthens, uh, you know, uh, the way that we do church, the way that we do ministry, the way that we do things. And uh, even in our denominational, it, it uh, amazes me. I uh, saw a comment where uh, they were talking about there was going to be a you know, the 2024 uh, General Conference, which is kind of a, a realignment of everything. And then they were going to have a special called conference in 2026. Uh, I think a lot of us in the church, we've gotten tired of the debate. We got tired of, of all that. And there was a comment that said, oh, yay, yawn, you know. And it was like one of those things that I thought, it's like, wow, I, I, I think maybe the... The church is like that now. We've we've gotten to where we're just tired of them fighting each other. And I think that whether they're conservative or liberal or somewhere in between, and uh, have those and the battle's been going on for so long that we no longer, uh, you know, it, it no longer has a bite to it. Uh, Sermon Sunday is about a reckoning or the, or the last day when Christ returns. And it's like one of those things that I think it's quite remarkable. Uh, you know, used to, it was like, you've got to get right with God. You've got to get out there. You've got to do things. You've got to be ready. You've got to be prepared and all of that type of thing. And I think we've gotten kind of like just flatlined in lots of ways. And I hate that because it's like one of those things, there's so much potential and so much good we could do in the world if we would only set our minds to it and doing it. Um, we uh, sometimes lack on that, and, and, and I think it's, it's kind of uh, unreasonable to think that things will change, uh, you know, and, and we kind of get that kind of that attitude that it's like we don't want to be a part of something that's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, I've been in different communities, and I always think it's kind of interesting, well, at the Christian church, uh, they have a youth program at the uh, the Lutheran Church they have uh, a food program at the so and so church they have a kids program uh, you know and they have all these kids we used to have them we used to do that we used to be able to do and I think it's it's funny to hear that because it's like uh, so why don't we do it now you know it would be my question but then it'd be like then then they hit up against the wall like oh well you know. People have moved and this and that, and they tell you all the reasons that they don't have it anymore or they haven't done it in a long time. And then I think it's crazy to see uh, the resistance to, to change and, and different stuff, to wanting to do it always the way we did it. Well, if you keep doing it the way you've always done it, 
you're going to end up in, in, a, in a world of hurt. And I think uh, that this scripture talks about that. It talks about the differences between the way that was working, the way that it was, you know, times were good and things were going well. And then when things started to shape up a little bit and they started to get a little rougher, all of a sudden it was like, well, we need to do this on our own. We need to figure this out for ourselves. We need to do this new program. We need to go ahead and get, uh, we need to get a leader, a leader who will, uh, you know, lead us into battle, a leader that will do all those things. When in, in fact, it's like they already had that leader and it was God and God's chosen judges and different ones that were uh, a part of that. And um, it, it amazes me how things, even back thousands of years ago, uh, people had to kind of the same mindset. And then they wonder why it doesn't work or why it didn't, it didn't come to fruition and different things like that. But I have always, and I am still, an, I admire the people called Methodist. I think it is amazing the things that we do and we reach out to people way beyond our uh, with our, our community uh, around the world. We are doing things in, in places that I have never heard of and probably you have never heard of. Towns and situations that are facing uh, disasters, whether it be floods, earthquakes, war, uh, just uh, man-made and, and human-made disasters as well as natural disasters all around the world, taking thousands and thousands of lives. But we keep reproducing. We keep, you know, the, the quarter of a million people died in the tsunami uh, several years back, and then turn around and we replace those folks. And it, it's pretty remarkable how uh, that can be and how that does and goes about uh, being a part of that. So uh, it's one of those things to think about. It's one of those things to pray about, and I would encourage that wholeheartedly. And, and I hope that, um, you know, as we go through the Bible and as we pick up different ways and different methods of thinking about how all of that works, um, that you would, you would understand that uh, it's not us versus them. It's us working together to, be, uh, to do ministry in ways that, is, that strengthens how we, um, uh, how we do come together, how we are a part of something greater and better. Uh, and that um, reaches out well beyond uh, the simple, uh, this is the way I do it, and this is the way I'm going to do it, and this is the way that you're going to do it with me, and different stuff like that. So uh, just to know that if we focus on God, we keep Christ-centered in all of the things and all the decisions we make, uh, life would be good, life would be well uh, for us. Uh, one another, loving and caring for one another. And that's, that's what's so important. So, so important. Um, uh, I'll be back on Monday, Lord willing. Uh, we're looking forward, as I said, to Thanksgiving, our uh, meal that we will be having here on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, that's kind of a new experience for me. I'm not quite sure how all that logistically works, but on the 23rd, I guess in the Fellowship Hall, there will be... Uh, food and treats and all that kind of stuff to have. Um, then uh, the 1st of December, we will be having our Christmas. Uh, Kim and them have been working on that and getting that together. And, uh, I am, uh, I'm looking forward to lots of good things in the new year. I was, well, in, to finish out this year as well, but also looking forward to that. Uh, ask for your prayers for school. Uh, or that's winding down. We got a couple of more weeks to go, and this semester will be over. Um, uh, can't really think of anything off the top of my head other than uh, simply just to keep in prayer for one another, keep helping, and and keep in contact. Keep that that, that relationship thing is is the most important part of what makes us into the church. And, makes it possible for us to understand and different things. Dear gracious God, we thank you for this time together as we go through the book of Samuel, as we look forward to the, the gospel of Luke, as we move into the new year. We just ask for your blessing upon us and us being able to reach the goals necessary to continue to be a minister and a ministry to you, through you, and into our community and into our world. We ask for your blessing of those that are sick, those that are injured or ill, that they would be lifted up by the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would be healed completely and thoroughly. 
quickly and, and, and with, with the healing touch that you only you have. Bless this time together. Bless this day. And thank you for being our God. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you Sunday. And then, uh, Lord willing, uh, continue our, our daily devotional on Monday. God bless.